We are at the Mountain Artists Guild, and we are with Don Sintel. And what is your position? Well, this year I'm president of Mountain Artists Guild, and it's okay. uh, my second year as president. Okay, it's lots now, of fun. This is a nonprofit, am I correct? This is a nonprofit organization that's 73 years old this year. You're primarily, if you're a nonprofit, do you have employees? We have uh, one full time employee, and okay. we have three part time employees but mostly we're staffed by volunteers. Okay, so that's a really important thing when you're looking at guilds, uh, when they put them together, because they're depending upon the public mm -hmm. who have a great interest in art or just like to be around it and they want to help. And so getting volunteers here is an important thing for yeah. your events or? Oh my gosh, yes. And we have some non-members who also volunteer. All right which is great. Yeah, all the hands you can get. Yes. So do you want to explain the past history of and how the Guild got started and who was part of that? Well, uh, the Guild, as I said, is 73 years old this year. And like a lot of Guilds, it starts really small. So four or five people got together who had a, an, a, you know, a mutual interest in, in making art or supporting the arts. Well, on the Guild, explain what a Guild is versus just just a building that somebody's got a gallery. <laughs> there's a difference. There definitely is a difference. The a guild in, is, you know, it's a very old word where people came together who had a specialty. Right. So these people who came together, their specialty was art. Okay. And uh, one of our first members who helped create the guild was George Fippen. George Fippen was a painter of Western scenes. So, you know, he really brought brought the whole idea of Western art into being, became well known for it, but he was also a fantastic sculptor. And, you know, there's many people who've come after him who are, and today they're trying to capture Western scenes. Yeah. You know, the cowboys, the, the cattle, right. the horses, right. and they are memorializing it because mm -hmm. it's in the past. There's very little of it left now. This is our first real home. Now, like a lot of guilds or small art associations. We had a lot of meetings there in the beginning as well. Uh, over the years, they, they kept expanding, they kept getting more members. And this was the first building they bought. It didn't have a gallery. Uh, my understanding is it had, you know, maybe a classroom, it had maybe offices, but it was pretty small. So back in 2002, they decided that they needed a bigger space. Uh, they started looking around. Where could they move? And there was a place next door they could have moved to, but it was, you know, it wasn't quite right. And Ruth Street, this is 701 Ruth Street, it was kind of off the beaten track. So um, eventually they found this building. And in 2002, they moved into here. This is a, a very nice uh, place to start. This is done by a member, Gary Cassidy. And uh, People can donate $50 to this and they can get a leaf on this vine. What is it made of? This is ceramic. Oh, it's ceramic. This is ceramic, but this no is kidding. copper. It's on copper. Yeah, I saw it was, I didn't know if these were all metal or what, because it's uh, well, ceramic. Yes, so a member had made those. Okay. And then uh, Dick Yetman, he gave us some of the copper wire. Gotcha. So, you know, the public comes forth sometimes when you put out a specific need and we right. needed copper wire. So yeah. now we believe, I'm not sure, but we believe these stained glass doors were actually here when they when they bought the building. I could be wrong about that, but we believe this was a church before. Oh, really? That's what we'd been told. Okay. Um, it could be wrong. It could be just, you know. You know what's interesting about any of that? With you, you'll hear these kind of things about buildings when somebody moves into the building and how little information. It's amazing how things just disappear I know you just don't know exactly so what is here these are well are these this is uh, they are this is a special show this is uh, it's a wildlife which was well, a the show is called it's, it's a, a wild life. life it's a wild life. yes okay. and uh, it was a quad city competition that we had we invited any artists non-members as well as members to participate we ended up with 140 submissions to the show from 50 artists usually we have maybe 35 pieces on the wall and this time we had we have much more sure so uh it was very well received by the community um you know, who wanted to have this kind of opportunity. Well, it's your interpretation of it's a wild life. Okay. 
right? So it didn't have to be wildlife. It could be something else in your life. Yeah, so walk walk around. So part of this uh, competition, there was original fine art paintings. Uh, There was um, photography is another category. Jewelry and um, the third one was three-dimensional objects. Okay, so some some of this was entered in the competition and then we had other artists bring additional pieces in to kind of fill out the gallery and um, they they usually did have something in the competition as well. So like this fellow, he got first place for this piece, which is absolutely phenomenal. And this is honey locust, uh, wood, wood turning. And uh, I believe the top is walnut. And it's very hard to do that kind of turning when it's that fine. Sure, because it breaks. It breaks. Well, yes, it's hard, was... but still. <laughs> it still it does break. And then this is one of my favorite pieces back here, yeah. this little guy. That looks special. You know, we have, um, we just really have a nice variety in here. And some of these are, as I say, weren't in this the competition. Well, this is polymer clay. Yes, and I was looking at that. Isn't that it's amazing? Polymer and steel. The way for underneath. Right. The nice thing about polymer clay, but a little bit I know about it, is you can get really vivid colors. Yes, you paint it with your acrylics. Yeah. And uh, and and of course it's oven roasted, as I say. It's it's, it's cooked roasted. in the oven. If if somebody said, oh, that's a really nice piece. What else does she make? How could I get a hold of her? How could I see her? Does she have a website, et cetera, et cetera? How would somebody be able to get that kind of information? If they have a website, they're listed on our website. Okay. So you can look at their website from there. So if I remember correctly, going through your website, because I detailed most of it anyway, uh-huh. is that there is links on just about all the artists where you can wave over that artist and it'll bring up their website. That's correct. If they have one, right? If they have one, yes. Right, and it's pretty, it's pretty almost complete. I want to walk around with you and just sure. look at a couple of things. So this one won first place. All yes. Right. This is, I don't know. Uh, I don't know the medium here. What is? That's pastel. Oh. Okay. And Lynn Delano uh, is very active in the zoo. Right? So the people who don't know what pastels are, could you explain yeah. a little bit? Versus well, paint. Okay. Well, there's different types of pastel. Okay, but there's chalk enough. pastels, which are, you know, like colored chalk. Sure. And um, so she was using chalk pastel okay. for this. But uh, there's also oil pastels, which are oily. Uh, and you can use with oil paintings. And then there's pan pastels, which are little cakes. Oh yeah, right. And uh, they don't, fl- the dust doesn't come up as well, much can, from them. You can brush in detail. Exactly. Right. Uh, but she used... Chalk pastels. Chalk as pastels. far as I know, that's... Wow, the that's, detail is fantastic. Oh yes, it's incredible. And this uh, wolf, the Mexican wolf, Mia Coda, Mia Coda, I think is how it's pronounced, yes. is actually in our zoo here and has oh, three sisters. We saw them yesterday. Okay. And they were <laughs> busy. They look so much like dogs and kind of friendly and very, and very nice behind the fence. Yeah, behind the fence. <laughs> right behind the fence. But this one is very good too. It's same. Well, name. it's her. Yeah, same. Yeah, uh, Linda Lena with her yeah. hawk. Really, really, really yes, good. Yes, yes. Really good. So you know, you get a lot of different mediums in here. This okay. is an oil. Oh um, wow. That's oil. I would have never guessed that. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Kathy Sinclair does a great job. And this yeah. is fabulous. This lion, look at that. Yeah. Look at the face. <laughs> yeah, right. What about this one here? This looks also like a pastel. Um, Connie doesn't usually do pastel, I don't believe, but she does oil. Yeah. Uh, what, how, if you didn't have this marked or you didn't know and you weren't you, Yes. how could you tell? Like if you're just a person walking through here, how could you tell that it's probably a pastel? What would be the giveaway? Um, to me, uh, it's a chalkiness of the background. Okay, that's what I was. Okay, that's what I was. And thinking. then I looked at the eggs too, so I'm I'm thinking it's pastel. Right, because if you were brushing, you wouldn't get that quite that. Well, light. you could, but I think it'd be tedious. You'd have to scrape right, at it. Right, right. These are some of these are canes, walking sticks. Mm-hmm. Okay, and, and this is this one uh, actually won. Second place. So yes, tell us about this. Three dimensional. Well, uh, Larry Walterstorff, who's our VP, um, does this carving and he's quite a master. Uh, he was saying, you know, carvings like this take weeks 
you know, several hours a day for weeks. And then, but this one he carved for this show, it's a wildlife. Mm -hmm. And this is an octopus. Mm -hmm. um, and it has its eight tentacles going down. And he was telling me it was very difficult to uh, keep track of each tentacle to make sure that it actually connected up to the, to the body of the octopus. Well, I like the fact that there's green and browns and things that would be on the, in the ocean. Yeah, he, and he burnished this, you know, yeah. to make it look different, yeah, it to, different. To, like something on the ocean floor. Sure. Yeah, this is fabulous. Let's take a walk over here. Okay. There's a lot of different ones that are interesting. That's vivid. Well, you know, this shows you the range of styles uh, that our members uh, bring sure. with them when, when they come to the guild or they develop their style. Uh, Donald Hildreth, he just moved here from um, California, Southern California. And he actually got best of show on another of his paintings so that's in this. Explain the medium here if you This is guess. oil. So this is oil? Yes, this and is oil. Using... Do you see the lines? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. That's so brush. it's brushwork. Okay. So a lot of people, when they start out being painters, mm -hmm. they want to detail exactly what they're painting. Right. Show every little detail. Right. I did. Right. And um, over the years, they get tired of doing all that detail. Sure. <laughs> My first watercolor, I spent 200 hours on, and it was realistic, uh, what they call photorealistic. I sure. was copying exactly the photo. Sure. So it took me 200 hours. And after so it was doing a technical it, piece. It was technical. And after doing several of those, I said, I'm never going to, you know, get anywhere doing art this slowly. So right. I, a lot of artists try to loosen up. Right. And this this fellow, Donald, has definitely loosened up when it comes to oil painting. The whole idea of an artist is to see the world through a different lens. Yes. And you're not, even a photographer now will take things and make them a bit abstract. But with an artist, that is the whole idea from the beginning, to see the world differently and to paint what they feel and they see. And this would be more of that, because if you really want something realistic, you could just get a camera, right? Well, you could. And I think, you know, that's the growth pattern for a lot of a lot of young artists is yeah. to start with, you know, trying to replicate what you see. Mm -hmm. Some never want to change, and that's perfectly fine, too. Right. You know, a lot of artists then say, well, what else can I do? To, what can I do differently? So let's say I took a photo of the camera. Okay. Okay. And I said, I'm going to paint that photo. Well, mm -hmm. when I was a young artist, I would try to do every detail mm -hmm. of, of that camera. But then, over the years, I've not wanted to do that. I've wanted it to be softer, to be looser. So what I do is I, I tweak the photographs so they're fuzzier. Oh, okay. <laughs> Out of focus. Sure. Or I I'll don't wear my glasses. All right. Now, and if by not wearing my glasses and I look at a photograph, <laughs> you know, it's a little out of focus. <laughs> <That's pretty laughs> so I can I can paint that and, and it's not as detailed. When it's painted like this, you're feeling the wind. Mm -hmm. As the wind's blowing, mm -hmm. so she's got her arms closed because she's it's cold. probably cold, <laughs> right? He's got his hands mm -hmm. in his pocket. Being a guy, he's not going to hold himself that way. Both looking at him yes. differently with a different feeling. Hers more like a mother's love, yeah, and his more like attentive. Like, what is he doing? What is he doing? And is he going to hurt himself? You know, because yes. I'm going to have to deal with that. Yeah. So it's interesting, but you get the emotional feel out of it because it isn't just like a photograph. You can pull other things out of that. Because because it's painted in such a way. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. <laughs> now this is cool because this one is drinking water, but seriously paying attention to something else too. I All love at the same. Yes, time. I I love both these paintings because yeah. and it's so neat that they're next to each other. Yeah. Uh, two to completely different styles. Yeah. So this is oil. Yeah. This is acrylic. Uh -huh. I would not really want to meet up with this this creature. Uh, because he he's on the lookout for something, right. you know. I could be really good bait. So he can be eating, <laughs> he can be eating, but watching for his next meal quickly. Right. Whereas this one, he's kind of like, well, I already had dinner. Yeah. You know. Right, that's true. <laughs> this one looks self-satisfied. Yes. So these are different styles, and the title is "Did You Steal My Banana?" But look at the softness here. It I looks know, like pencil, like yes. you smudged it. Yeah. Yes. Right. Right. Yes. Right. You use your finger and go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
That's what they do. I don't know if that means anything to anybody who just, I made that gesture. <laughs> Well, well, and you know, there are different hardnesses of pencils. Right. It's from soft, soft to hard. I was and soft. I was yeah, thinking. and it definitely with soft, you could yeah. do that with yeah. the smudginess. Yeah. And, and a little bit of brown. <laughs> yes, a just a bit tiny brown, bit. Just to add something to An it. Attitude. So, wonderful. So, and that's interesting all by itself. To me, that could be to a lot of things. Somebody standing in front of fall and seeing a lot of <laughs> colors. Somebody standing inside of a in front of a fire, you know, mm -hmm. which this is a, called the wall of fire. I would think fire, only fire, was because the name is called the wall of fire. Right. But other than that, to me, it could be looking at you your imagination of just the world you're, right. you're looking at and going into yes. or, or whatever it is. Well, I painted this one. You did? What uh, about you? I, that's, that is me, yeah. That's freaking good. Uh, that's alcohol ink. Oh, really? Which is quite toxic. So when, once you hit a certain age, you want to add a little bit of alcohol <laughs> to almost every moment of well, your life. Yeah, I have certain <laughs> wines that I always, yeah. No, seriously. Use uh, like 91% alcohol ink, uh, alcohol, you know, like that you buy at the, the... Isopropyl alcohol. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And uh, it's hard to get because um, they, they're very suspicious of you buying it in the drugstore. Like, are you going to drink it or what? If I'm looking at you, I don't Yeah, I don't I, drink I don't it. So. But this is very dangerous <laughs> to actually use. So I, I wear a, sure. you know, a mask for toxicity. Sure, because it flashes right and, off. And, uh, it's a solid. Oh, oh my gosh. It's, it's very hard. It's, it goes into your brain. Right. But, so uh, I'm really careful. But the this is just free-flowing. You know, I tried to get flames. Now, um, I'm I'm very fearful of fire. I was almost caught in a wildfire once, uh -huh. so I'm fearful of it. And I've always lived in wildfire zones. Now, uh, go figure. But um, these are firefighters. Yeah, that's what in I my mind. Well, I'm seeing that once you say it's fire. Yeah, that's but I'm it seeing. can be. See, one you know, guy, it can be other one things. guy's fighting it like this, and the other's got some kind of a, a tool, uh, something that he's using over here. And it's doing a similar type thing. Right. But the and thing is just blazing. These are just, you know, they're charred. Sure. And um, this is actually based on two different photographs. Oh, really? Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I wanted the colors. Sure. But I also wanted the firefighters. So explain the, the technique again, alcohol. With alcohol ink. So what I, this is special paper. Like ink. Yes, it's so well, it comes what? in a tiny little bottle like this. Okay. Uh, what you do is you take UPO paper, which is a plastic. You lay it flat. All right. Uh, I poured the 91% alcohol all over this paper, and then I dotted colors into it, and then okay. I picked up the paper. So you have all these different colorings. Yes. So they will run because they, they run. They'll run into each other. Yeah. They do. And then when they dry, they kind of also harden how, and how create edges. How easy is it or not to control that? It's very difficult. I imagine. Yes. But you can. You can learn. Like, I didn't want to for this. Then you're mm -hmm. more careful about sure. applying it yeah. a little bit at a time. Sure. And then there's also alcohol ink markers. So you can go in and you can use the markers to kind of delineate of forms. Yeah. And to fill in color yeah. where you want it filled in. Yeah. And you can apply alcohol to that if you wish. So I applied alcohol after I had the inks down to kind of break it up and give it a look of ash or whatever, whatever you want to believe it is. And eventually you have to uh, varnish it because these uh, have to be protected from uh -oh. light. So you have to use a special UV uh, varnish. Oh, is that um, right? Yes, or else it'll fade over oh, time. So tell us about this sculpture, Wild Mother Goose. Wild Mother Goose, isn't this great? Um, I believe it's mesquite. And uh, oh, yeah. the artist, Joan Eberhardt, who's one of our wonderful volunteers who works here in the gallery, uh, likes to find pieces of this type of wood mm -hmm. and turn it into a beautiful sculpture. So this particular piece, um, she put turquoise pieces in it. So oh, yeah. inlaid, there's turquoise back it here. It looked like turquoise, chips. but I didn't know if there was really turquoise. Uh, I believe it is. Yeah, maybe it's, it's colored. I don't know, but it's it's it really adds to the piece. And if you sure. feel it, it's very, very smooth. And this is how she finishes it. She actually rubs it. You know, that's how she so gets this beautiful. Oil, some type of oil finish? I think it's just her palms. You know, really? our- Really? Our palms have a lot of oil, oil in them, in them. and right. so she sits at night and she works on them. That's got to take a while. 
Uh, yes. Now, I could be a little wrong about that. She may put something on what her What about palms. all the scratchy parts? Well, <laughs> they're not that bad. <laughs> what type of oils you're using? Cadmium. That's why all, most colors. artists, they lose all their toenails by the time Well, look at Van Gogh. Bored. They think now that he actually, uh, you know, kind of lost his mind because... Because he was toxic. out. He was using oil paints which were very toxic in those days and yeah, sure. terps and everything that were very toxic right yeah and just <laughs> using them not thinking about it. well he didn't know right I mean, back right then, exactly they didn't think about things like that then right. he used a lot of cadmium colors ah. which are very toxic yes yeah, so heavy metals heavy metals yes and the whole thing about heavy metals <laughs> not the heavy metal bands which people still like but the actual heavy metals right but this is a second place photography yeah really that's photography it is, but uh, George Lewis, um, he was a member, and, right. and George uh, used a very specific process for this. Um, he actually, it was based on a, a digital photo he took, but then he, he took it kind of backwards into a different age where he aged it. Yeah. And then he, he actually used a certain paper, and he put it in a bath of plat platinum and, oh golly, what was the other chemical? Radium. Palladium, thank you. This is Donald, you have to come here. So Donald got best here. of show. So, so I was gonna show you, I wanna show you his, his uh, uh, so painting. So it's more looking at it. Oh, you, oh. you can look there. Right there. there we go. Yeah. So that's, Donald, what's your last name? Hildreth. Hildreth, okay. Yes. Yes. Well, we already looked yes. at We looked at one of his paintings, but yeah. we haven't yet looked at best of show, which he painted. Oh, okay, fair yes. enough. Yes, so. So you're important. He's very well, I, important. More important than I knew. Yeah, yeah. right. Apparently. Well, it depends on what you, what, what you... Are you married? Yeah, there's... Uh, your wife? Am so I? is he important? He's important. There you go. So he's got stuff to do at home, and that stuff won't get done, so That's he's true. important. That is true. <laughs> It's a beautiful show. Everything is hung beautifully. Thank you. Yeah. So you're mentioning that how this person did that. What did they use? Platinum, platinum and palladium. And I, I'm not a. It's a bath that he put it in. Yeah, the, the I, I, platinum I've heard about. Obviously, silver figures into yes. photography. I don't know a lot about photography. Palladium, I think it's a metal that's not dissimilar from platinum in mm -hmm. certain ways. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can look on the uh, periodic table and okay. figure that one out. Okay. <laughs> they're, they're still chemicals, though, so there must be some risk. Well, they're metals, and they have certain um, properties as as metals that somehow they're, they're light sensitive. And right. Ah, so this is what... That makes sense. That's, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's a black and white thing. But so I was wondering, because it, it couldn't be... It couldn't be something that's going to be uh, acidic or alkaline. So it's a light sensitivity that makes the difference. That is correct. Ah. And I must, I forgot to ask George how he actually, what he does with those when he's done with them. They, you know, they yeah, stop because they stop that process. Yeah, because I don't think you're supposed to throw it down No, the, I don't think train, so. You know, <laughs> you have to like go to the has, yeah. hazmat. You put that in right. your neighbor's drink. <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> I hope not. The neighbor doesn't like that and you're not yeah. going to tell well, him. Well, that's yeah. true too. <laughs> <laughs> So if you can hang around, then I, then you I mean, can talk to your painting when we get over I there. Can do Would that. you do that? I, you know, first? you know what? I, I'd love to just walk over there. And do you want to do it now? Sure. Yeah. Okay. While he's here. <laughs> but first, I want to hear from your wife. I want I, I want to hear how what it's like to live with an artist versus maybe maybe something that was just somebody that was a CPA or something that that brought that a nice check every month instead of uh, being on the edge all the time, like we are too. <laughs> can I, can you have any comments? <laughs> Why is all always jump on that? Ask away. Hey, I thought you were on my side. <laughs> <laughs> so what painting are we looking at? The one right behind you. With oh, the with, with the, the purple, purple ribbon. ribbon. Yeah. Right, because the purple, purple, and you do the purple here. So I'm gonna <laughs> walk over here. Oh, this is similar in look and feel to the one we were looking at over there, too. Mm -hmm. All right, so the story is essentially that Sandy and I moved to Prescott in uh, November of last year, end of October, actually. So we've been here a short period of time. And um, in trying to figure out the streets, we were traveling down, I think it was Iron Springs Road, and I saw the fairgrounds. Of course, it was empty, right? Because this is in the middle of winter. And the big billboard that says Frontier Days. Right. One of the oldest rodeos in the country. Yeah. And uh, I started thinking about this, this actually is a Western place. You know, I'm born and raised in California, Los Angeles. So that's kind of like city stuff. Right. 
And I'm thinking about the, all the beauty of the horses and the riders and then the combination when you're doing the rodeo stuff. The dynamics of <laughs> two bodies trying to stay together. And yeah. of course, usually the horse wins or the bull if, the, if it's a bull rider. But they have to go into these wild gyrations of, you know, like to stay on. You've seen, you know, like... Oh, I've watched it in have you actually done it in the yeah. bar on the... No, no, that's not <laughs> you me. You know what I'm talking that's about. That's not me, but I watch. <laughs> it's not me either. <laughs> but this guy's making it look easy. Anyway, I was challenged by... I, I just wanted to paint some kind of a rodeo-like scene. There's a lot of photographic reference material, because, I mean, I... So that's what I was going to ask you. So first of all, yeah, your reference material that you... I just... From, from I, looked at, I looked at pictures of rodeo riders, and, you know, sometimes they're halfway in, you know, on the way to falling completely off the horse. And sure. Sometimes they're on the ground sometimes or not but there's a point when they first get started with the bucking part yeah where they're in contact and under control and they yeah. want to maintain that so this guy's under control but it's still he's right in the edge of the thing to me it's a very it was a challenge to, to try to depict this it's oil it's oil oil and canvas and then yeah. i put some spectators back there i just suggest them a little bit like maybe you think those guys they're they're cowboys or spectators hanging out on the fence watching this guy. And actually it's good to have him back there just watching because they really don't have a dog in that hunt. You know? They do not have a dog but in that hunt. <laughs> they're just back there. They may actually, can, well, they may be betting, yeah, who they, knows? But, yeah, but they're back there just, to me, they're just watching with, that hey, he falls, he doesn't fall, you know? Well, they're probably cheering him on, I guess. Cheering him on, yeah, you know. yeah. <laughs> And then you throw a few clouds in the sky just to make it a little bit interesting so it's not a completely blank area of the canvas and then you got a scene. Yeah. <laughs> and, and let me ask you, let me ask you, why do you think he won first prize? Since you're not the one that picks it, but you that it ended up that way. Yeah, well what was what what made this stand out? Well, first of all, uh, the, the theme, It's a Wildlife, really applies to people who who work at the rodeos riding the Bronx and, and the riding the bulls. Okay. Um, so the theme itself lent itself to this it's type of right. painting. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I love rodeo, so I looked at it and just went, okay, I love that. He is definitely on that horse for the moment. Um, I like the back of the horse and how it's kicking up the dust. You know, I can just feel it in my teeth. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I think He's loving being on that horse. I just get the sense that... They have to love that. That's got to be a rough... Oh, yes, for sure. And I think it's you, Donald, on that horse. Well, that's great. That was help super helpful. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for... Oh, so, was no, fortuitous. For, for, well, for people to be able to explain, because most people just walk through and go, oh, that's nice. Or it's, must, it's on the wall, so it must be important. It must be nice. I'm not sure why, but well, let's look at the next one. To have an explanation and understand a little bit more about what somebody's thinking would be, it would be great that they had a, a gallery somewhere or some type of museum where all the artists were just standing around waiting for somebody to ask a question and then they could explain all their work and they go, oh, I actually learned something today. Mm -hmm. It's hard to learn when it's still a mystery behind the canvas, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so, so there's some necklaces? Yes, well, the. These necklaces are, are, are really interesting. The two up here, uh, the, the bigger pieces on each edge, are by Linda Brett, the, who used polymer clay. I was gonna ask if that was polymer clay. Yes, that's polymer clay. Yeah. And she, but this is a metal clay that she uses. Right. So it's different from this, a different that, process. If I was a female that would wear things like that, I would find that to be more common. You think this, I think this isn't first. heavy? Oh, that's not heavy? No, it's not heavy. I can't tell from here. No. So it's super light. Well, again, well, light it's, it's a, meta a, metal a metal clay. So it's not... What does that mean? Well, it's some sort of clay that has metal in it. There is a video that we did of her talking about polymer clay. Okay. And I told her afterwards, we really need her to come back and also talk about the, the metal clay and how you create uh, jewelry with it. Right. But it, the detail's wonderful. And somebody else fell in love with it too, because it's sold. Sure. <laughs> and then uh, down here, on um, on the far side, oh, yeah. uh, your right Somebody is the first place winner, and that's a certain type of um, uh, process she used with silver in it, mm -hmm. uh, with a piece of coral, mm -hmm. uh, very fine, beautiful work. Mm -hmm. 
And then this little clown face by yeah. the same artist, Charlotte yeah. Ewell, yeah. Um, is Cloisonne. So this saddle was painted by um, a woman who has become a member because of this show. And um, she told me just about every piece of work she entered was 3D. And we loved the idea of the saddle being painted and truly, when I look through stereoscopic glasses like you have Hello. here, it, it, it does look like octopus legs. Uh, it, it's very 3D. So I am going to put on glasses. I'm going to step away. I see the blue standing out. Oh, that's interesting. I see the opposite. You know how you have those, those pictures where you say, which one do you see? Do you see a man and a woman or a whatever, right. a barn and a house yes, or something? Yes, So people see things differently. So yeah, I see that standing out instead. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to make my eyes see it the other way. Now I see octopuses, yeah. But it's not like dramatic. No, no. I, I, maybe it's not an octopus. But the bottom line is, uh, with those glasses, you, it does become 3D. And we don't know how she created that effect. Um, I haven't been able to talk to her to ask her that, but I'm curious, you know, that's, that's so unique. So as Spencer, is this a new look for me? <laughs> oh, Great, new is the word. <laughs> Not good. Okay, then we have, uh, she's looks like maternity week 27, so she's about six months pregnant. And she's looking at us and saying, okay, everybody knows now. <laughs> so can you just leave me alone? Right. He, he was telling <laughs> us yesterday that uh, he worked with her from about week 17 on, I think he said. Really? And he said, uh, gosh, you know, he didn't realize um, how temperamental uh, pregnant women could be. Really? <laughs> So I thought that was interesting. He he did some fabulous photos. Uh, so with as her we learn from his photos, he he learns with that. <laughs> he, he learns about hormones. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So you've got the some sandhill cranes. Yes, that's down in Whitewater Draw. Oh in, really? Uh, southeast Arizona. Okay. Uh, about thirty thousand uh, sandhill cranes come in over the winter. And uh, it's quite a sight to see. If you've never been there, I encourage. Never been there. Oh my gosh, it's fabulous. So where is it exactly? Uh, south well, you go to Wilcox. Wilcox, okay. And you keep going south uh, right. along the San Pedro River. All right. And it's right down near the border. Oh, okay. And it's a huge area. <clears throat> um, so when, did it, when, it, when is the time that they come? Well, they start showing up in December. All right. And then by late February, March, there's usually like 30,000 oh, and really? the noise is incredible yeah <laughs> they go out there's a lot of a lot of wheat fields around there so they go out during the day to eat in all the fields and then about uh, late in the afternoon about 4 p.m. they start returning and uh, they fly in and they it's just massive yeah I was just yeah. picturing 30,000 flying over yeah well <laughs> <laughs> it's like if you the chance of you getting hit by a straight bullet is pretty low, but thirty thousand people shooting at you with a straight bullet that could, that could be a little, <laughs> that could different, be different, a little different. Uh, yes, yeah. the, I find the uh, all, this always interesting because it's called the green heron, but in fact, and it's small. It's a right. small and heron. No green except for the green. No, heron. it's a beautiful colors and beautiful pattern, and I, I believe the reason this was given first place is because of the capturing of the reflection of the bird in the water oh, yeah. right underneath. You can still see the pattern. Can you see that? It's ah. the green heron. He's a little guy, you know, he's, and he was, um, he was sitting on the branch. So who's the real heron? <laughs> so a little green heron. That's interesting. This, this is, this is not a photograph. Right. It's in this room, but it's actually a mezzotint. When you do an etching on copper, a mezzotint is hand pulled. So it means that you put your paper down and you put inks first mm -hmm. and you put your paper down and then you roll it, you rub it with, you know, your brayer you're using. You, you can do it small. That might've been a smaller brayer, which is a roller, rubber. Um, and it'll be, um, it's original in that the color's always different. So if he was to do another one of these, it might be blue or it could be greenish. Even if he tried to use the same ink and get the same effect, he probably would not. And it was a lost art for a long, long time. And then a woman in California 
uh, started actually doing mesotints uh, and renewed maybe, the interest. Maybe she, she started reading about it and was interested Could in it. Could be. She had her own gallery there for many years. From what I gather as a novice on these things, that all of these different techniques are just like in music and a lot of things. There are people who are just experimenting with whatever. How about I got some of this and I got some of this. Why don't we try doing it this? Let's do it this way. That didn't work. Let's do it <laughs> exactly. this way. That really worked great. Yes. Let's try to do more of that and mm -hmm. even get better at it. And then all of a sudden it becomes a method that everybody wants to do. Right. Now this one to me, okay, now this is my own opinion. Mm -hmm. Because this is a heck of a, a photograph and the detail in the hands and the feel and everything would almost seem contrived if it wasn't for the fact that it's so well done. Well, in, in a way, it was contrived, right, according right. to right, Dale. That was my first yeah. walk by. He wanted a, a photograph of hands, mm -hmm. and this is the baby of the woman that, over there. Really? Yes. It's an interesting story. <laughs> that is an interesting story. So this is the father's hands. They held the baby's hand there, and the baby, being a baby, was doing a lot of different motions and sure. everything, and he just happened and went like that. Right. And the, and Dale got the photo. This is the one that fascinates me, this yeah. one with the bluebirds. Yeah. Uh, because I guess what happened was, you know, a couple of bluebirds came, and she just happened to look out at her bird bath and saw the bluebirds and thought, oh, I'll go get my camera. Yeah, but so many times you go get the and camera, they're not there. And there's one left, you know, and that right. one's got to take And it's out. leaving yeah, or right. something. Yeah, well, exactly. in this case, they were all there when she came back. Cool. This is a multi use room, so we have member meetings in here. Okay. But we also have our workshops, art workshops in here. So okay. we'll have oil painting, acrylics, uh, okay. pastel workshops here. Okay. And it's a pretty big room, so we, we could have, you know, 13, 14 people and we always give them a table they bring their easels uh, usually this place is full of artists on a Friday morning doing that kind of art uh, so it's a it's a room that's uh, well used and uh, very important to our guild uh, tell me if I'm wrong here this is the uh, this is where they have the meetings for the mountain guild where they talk about how they're going to take all the members away from the Canyon Guild and it's a, been a battle over the last oh. 50 years. And, and they've been winning, which is terrific. <laughs> oh dear. Well, you know, uh, artists really like to be together. So right. um, there's a lot of, uh, in fact, I did a survey earlier uh, in the year about what, what do you want from us? You know, what's most important to you? Mm -hmm. And a high percentage of the people who responded said camaraderie. That's that right. was the reason why they started this 73 years ago. It was for camaraderie, for right. sharing, okay. supporting each other as artists. Are the artists able to do that? Do they, do they kind of make their own time where they meet each other sometimes? Well, we have open studios at certain times when you can show up or not. There's no instructor or anything. You all just get together. Okay, we're going to take a look at um, another artist who has... These are wildlife, but what's the special thing? Well, they're endangered. The these are all endangered. Yeah, yeah some of them... Uh, for example, the elephant over there is no longer endangered. Okay. Apparently, they've been able to well, good thing. bring them back right. from the brink, I guess. Right, right, okay. But, um, yes, yeah, so Sunny Shack, Sansola Shack, is a member. Her art is usually done with pan pastels. Uh, that's pastel work you're looking really? at. Really? Yes, all of her paintings here are that pastel. Did not, did not look like I thought it was a brush. And I thought... Well, with pan pastels, you can get oh, more of right. the... You are using little tools yeah. that are usually sponges. Right. Um, like so. you, would, you would paint the tight window seal parts in your house. Yeah, exactly. You know. Those, those little sponges. <laughs> you get it at Home Depot. Right. This is the second place uh, in the fine art category. Um, and Sunny was saying that uh, she actually used a couple different photos uh, to create this painting. So it was uh, very interesting. It makes you stop and think, you know. Mm -hmm. This establishment has many, many members who are fine artists with different backgrounds, different types of art techniques. They are doing different types of art. They'll have shows that will show their work and different people over time will submit it, different artists that are in it. Sometimes you'll only see one painting or one piece of art at all mm -hmm. from the one artist, but they have 
many, many, many more. And you can find out information about those, all those different artists. But it's nice to be able to walk into this building, see the show that they have right now, which is called? It's a wildlife. It's a wildlife. <laughs> Ask questions too, because all these things that we were telling you today yeah, are important, but we could ask a hundred more questions to get in more depth and you can find out a lot about art. The more you know, the more your interest is and the easier it is to uh, fall into it. Nobody can watch a football game if they don't know what's going on. Right. <laughs> but once you figure out what's going on, it could be interesting, yeah. right? And that's what it always comes down to. Exactly. So it's the same It's the same with art. You need to you need to get the details. Is there anything else you, you would like to say, state about your that we've, we've said a lot. Well, we said a lot and we left out a lot. We have uh, about six shows a year with a different theme. Generally, our shows are about two months in length. We uh, open for uh, Prescott Art Walk, Fourth Fridays. Now we're off the square, so there's a little buggy that oh. will pick people up and bring them over. And what is your next show? Oh, it's the called theme. Twilight. And what, what, what does Twilight mean in a theme-wise? Well, well that's up to the artist. We do want them to kind of interpret the theme. That's what art is about, right? Okay. That's great. <laughs> I learned a lot. I think you guys learned a lot, right? Once again, we're always learning a lot. There isn't a time where we don't learn a lot. And this was great, so I, I appreciate your time. Oh, my pleasure. And you can find us at 228 North Alarkin. We're between Sheldon and Willis. Right. In Prescott. Right in Prescott. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this segment. Thank you.